Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel. Now, in literature, it's pretty common to use the letter E. It is one of the most common letters, in fact. And there's an entire novel out there of 50,000 words written in English that doesn't contain the letter E. You're going to learn all about this novel and why it even exists in today's video. Let's get started. Gadsby Ernest Vincent Wright's 1939 novel Gadsby is over 50,000 words long. There is nothing remarkable about that. What makes this novel noteworthy is that it doesn't contain a single letter E anywhere other than the cover. Given that E is the most commonly used letter in English, you might think that this would have been impossible, but Wright stated that this wasn't nearly as limiting as one might think. For instance, about half of the 500 most commonly used words in English were still available to him to use. That's not to say it was easy. Among the more difficult aspects of writing such a work, Wright had to avoid all ED endings, as well as the word the. Beyond that, he had to come up with clever, non-awkward ways to refer to certain things, such as a turkey, which he called a Thanksgiving national bird, and wedding cake, which was changed to an astonishing loaf of culinary art. He wrote the book in just under six months, starting in 1936 and finishing in February of 1937. In order to prevent himself from accidentally using the letter E, he disabled the key on his typewriter by tying it down. As to his motivation for writing Gadsby, he first thought to try writing a book without the letter E after learning that the letter E supposedly occurs in books and other writings on average about five times more than any other letter in English. He further became excited about the idea after discussing the matter with various people and having everyone tell him that it couldn't be done unless one threw out grammar and made a habit of creating awkward sentences. After completing the novel, he wrote, as I write along, in longhand at first, a whole army of little E's gathered around my desk, all eagerly expecting to be called upon. But gradually, as they saw me writing on and on without even noticing them, they grew uneasy, and with excited whisperings amongst themselves, began hopping up and riding on my pen, looking down constantly for a chance to drop off into some word, for all the world like seabirds perched, watching for a passing fish. But when they saw that I had covered 138 pages of typewriter-sized paper, they slid onto the floor, walking sadly away, arm in arm, shouting back, You certainly must have a hodgepodge of a yarn there without us. Why, man, we are in every story ever written hundreds of thousands of times. This is the first time we were ever shut out. He was unable to find a publishing house willing to publish Gadsby, so after two years, he sought out a vanity publisher to self-publish it, settling on Wetzel Publishing Co. in Los Angeles. Unfortunately for him, two things happened to stop the book from becoming widely published or even reviewed at all. First, the fact that there was a fire at Wetzel's warehouse, which resulted in not only a firefighter losing his life in the blaze, but also the vast majority of the copies of Gadsby being destroyed. The second thing that happened was Wright himself died just two months after publishing the book at the age of 67. With no one left to promote it and few copies in existence, it faded into obscurity for a time, but has gained popularity over the years. Today, Gadsby is considered something of a classic, albeit in the oddity category, rather than for its literative qualities. Nonetheless, thanks to its notoriety and scarcity, a first edition copy of Gadsby, even one in poor condition, tends to cost around $4,000 to $5,000. Bonus Facts Gadsby wasn't the only classic not to be appreciated in its time. Moby Dick only sold 3,000 copies over a 40-year span during the author Herman Melville's lifetime, making Melville only $556.37. Also, it was largely overlooked critically. Bonus fact 2. Works like Gadsby are called lipograms. A lipogram is basically just a form of writing where the writer purposefully excludes a letter or symbol from their text. Lipogram comes from the Greek lipogrammatios, more or less meaning leaving a letter out. Another type of lipogram is a pangrammatic lipogram. This is where you write something, usually very short, like a single sentence that includes every letter of the alphabet except one. Bonus fact 3. Little is known of Ernest Wright beyond some details surrounding Gadsby and that he wrote three other books, The Wonderful Fairies of the Sun in 1896, The Fairies That Run the World and How They Do It in 1903, and Thoughts and Reveries of an American Blue Jacket in 1918. He also wrote a comedic poem that became mildly popular, When Father Carves the Duck. 
As to what he did with the rest of his life, there are conflicting accounts. He was either an English or American, and may or may not have been in the Navy or otherwise a sailor. It is known that he attended MIT's School of Mechanical Arts, which had a two-year program for high school students. Instead of taking normal high school classes, this program focused on educating teens with practical skills like metallurgy, carpentry, and the like. It is unknown whether he graduated, though, because they listed him as a special student in his second year, and no direct record of him graduating exists. Bonus Fact 4 Georges Perec published a 250-page book, La Disapparition, in French, which also didn't contain the letter E. This book was later translated to English. The English translation conformed to the same restriction as the French version, lacking any instance of the letter E. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.